Next question. Do pregnant women need to change the way they lift? Yeah, this is a good question. Uh, you know, obviously now Jessica's in her third trimester, um, and so we're, you know, modifying her workouts accordingly. And I've trained a lot of pregnant women. I'm sure you guys have too. And really the key, first off, I, I want to talk about the, the most important, best thing you can do uh, to maintain strength and health during pregnancy is to set yourself up before you become pregnant. Yeah, I think that's every, it reminds me of talking to uh, people that want to get into competing, right? And they, they would try and hire me like, hey, I want to do a show in 12 weeks. Can I hire yeah. you to get me ready? And I'm like, the real work is done before you go into show prep. I think of pregnancy the same way. Like the real good work, if you want to come out the other end feeling great still and rebound well, is to put in the work before you actually get pregnant. Yeah, because you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to get caught in the mindset and strategy of getting in shape while uh, yeah. also being pregnant. The key is to maintain fitness while pregnant and then to modify the workout to meet your your particular needs, your special needs as your body is changing. Now, let's just pretend we're talking about someone who isn't a complete beginner. We'll do that too. But let's start with someone who's not a complete beginner they're relatively consistent with their workouts and they get pregnant. Okay, aside from energy levels and you know that kind of stuff, which in the first trimester can uh, can vary wildly. I've trained women who felt absolutely terrible in the first trimester and I've trained women who in the first trimester didn't notice uh, too much. Now, Jessica, she was in the first category. Energy was bad. She was nauseous, severely nauseous throughout the whole first trimester. Um, but a lot of women they also go into it, and they're they're mostly okay. First trimester, nothing really needs to change aside from considering your energy levels and and how you feel. Your body isn't physically changing that much. Same thing for the most part for the second trimester. When you start to need to consider changes is when your belly really starts to grow and change because that will change muscle recruitment patterns. Mm -hmm. That will change body positioning. Um, you know, when the belly gets really big, split stance movements are almost always out of the question. Putting a one leg in front, now your belly's in the way, you can't do them. Uh, traditional squats are usually fine. Your legs are apart, you can, the belly goes in between the legs. Traditional deadlifts, usually not a good idea, um, although for some it is. Sumo deadlifts, probably a better uh, idea. Core exercises, first and second trimester, totally fine. As the belly grows, you're going to stop doing you know, flexion and extension of the spine. You're not going to be doing crunches uh, and that kind of stuff. But you can do rotation and you can do some mild stabilization. So like a plank is a great exercise for a pregnant woman. But even then, I would uh, I would caution you against doing planks towards the third trimester when the belly is getting really big because when you have a, when things are stretching out, you start to lose connection to some of the muscles of your core. So if you do planks, what you're doing is you're really working the hip flexors. So I would modify it. I would modify it and say, okay, we're going to go and we're going to put your elbows up on a really high bench or maybe an extended plank on a bar and just brace your core just to keep things uh, activated. I like less direct stuff for core. I mean, I, I'd, I'd say I agree with you on everything. I did a couple different things, though. Even first trimester, uh, I kind of modified all the – because Katrina's used to running all the MAPS programs, and uh, and most MAP, MAPS programs are perfectly fine. Uh, but I, I modified it a little bit more by adding more like pelvic floor focus. So more mm -hmm. like floor bridges. Mm -hmm. uh, we did look little things like I would do like these long strided lunges with her and then have her come up to a stabilization and actually tuck her tailbone. So I, she would lunge, big long strides, balance. So you get the kind of stability part. So I would incorporate stability into other movements versus like direct core yeah. exercises like a plank. Um I just found more value in that for her versus trying to do something. And, then, and especially as you start to get bigger with the belly, like you're saying, towards two and th third trimester, uh, doing planks like that, uh, I just think it, it, you could just incorporate stabilization into other movements. I did do a lot of sumo deadlifts, uh, goblet-type squats um, uh, with her, and a lot of hip thrust stuff. And then most everything else is like following like a MAPS program. And then the other, the, the other thing that I would always remind her is that you know, and you alluded to it already, Sal, is like, you know, we're not we're not trying to make any gains during mm -hmm. this time. It's literally we just want to maintain your health, maintain your strength, work on those pelvic floor muscles and, and stay healthy and stay active. So, you know, sometimes it was uh, walking in a mobility day. You know, I just want to make sure that we're, we're staying active, that we're staying mobile. 
Um, but if your energy levels weren't there, I want to make sure you're getting good rest. I want to make sure that you feel good from your workouts. We're not trying to stress you a- anymore. So, you know, I just reminding Katrina, we I took load off a lot of times. I would just tell her, is like, you know, if she didn't feel great from the day before, like uh, Jessica, her first trimester was, you know, she was really tired. Really, really mm-hmm. t- I remember her falling asleep on the couch next to me at like 5, 6 p.m. at night, you know, never seen her do that before. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if she was coming into a workout and I knew she was, you know, fatigued or tired, you know, I would just uh, modify and say, hey, this is, you know, this is a day. Let's go work technique. Yeah. Let's go real, real light, you know, like 30, 40% of the load for you. And, uh, you know, you really got to listen to your body. Yeah. And, and it was a similar case with Courtney in the first trimester, very tired. Um, and both pregnancies were different too. And so it produced a different type of energy that she was coming in with. And really the biggest key was to just keep moving and stay active and do things that were similar to what she was already doing previous to that. The third trimester was really the one that, you know, was the difficult one to make sure that, uh, because it's uncomfortable, the load is different. Uh, now we're accounting for all uh, these different recruitment patterns, like Sal's mentioning. So what I would do is like, yeah, hip bridging. I'd use the the stability ball a lot, you know, for that as well, uh, just for movement and rotation around with the hips and uh, being able to um, basically uh, balance and, and stabilize. It was big. And so I'd also have like a lot of the carries. And so in, instead of like doing a lot of very specific, uh, like lunging squatting, which we would do as well, but just a lot of carries to, to try and account for, uh, how to, how to, how to, how to basically stabilize the body when it's in a different load situation. I also had her doing a lot of Turkish get-ups. That was another thing I remember that mm, I yeah, added a lot into her. So more, more than any, even any, any of the maps programs that we have included, uh, that was kind of a staple move that, you know, her just practicing getting up off the ground and stabilizing something overhead. I mean, you get pelvic floor muscles in, involved in that. You get stability involved in that. You get her hip hinge in that. There's so many great things that you get from that movement. So just practicing the Turkish get up was a great exercise. By, by far, the best thing you could do uh, before, during, and after pregnancy is uh, strength training um, because it's going to give you a solid base from which you can lose strength from. Okay. Because here's what happens after pregnancy. You're not going to be moving much after you have your baby. You shouldn't, in fact. In fact, you should lay around, allow things to heal. Um, you don't want to develop uh, any issues. And, of course, when you do that, things start to atrophy. Well, if you go into that situation with strength and muscle, you're going to come out of it uh, much better. Like I said, I've trained lots of pregnant women, and uh, it's remarkable to see the difference in how quickly they rebound versus you know, people that don't do that kind of oh, training. Yeah. Now, what's the best program to follow? While you're pregnant, well, um, it depends. If you're very consistent now, any of our MAPS programs, for the most part, are okay so long as they match your current fitness level. If you're unsure and you kind of want to be safe, MAPS Starter is excellent. Mm -hmm. MAPS Starter is excellent uh, post-baby. That is the best program after you've had your baby. The the emphasis on MAPS Starter is perfect for the pregnant woman. It's absolutely perfect. Here's something else to consider when a woman is pregnant and going through that process, there's a, a, a hormone or chemical release called relaxin. And this loosens up your tissues and causes increased flexibility. Now, for obvious reasons, your body needs to do this. You're going to have a baby and you do want to be more flexible. But there is a potential dark side to this. If you don't have strength to support this increased flexibility, you actually can get some instability. And this is why sometimes pregnant women will get hip pain and weird joint pain that they normally wouldn't get is because they've they're looser without more you know more strength this is where mobility real proper mobility can make uh, a, a huge difference the ability to continue to connect to muscles and, and to create greater ranges of motion with strength will really benefit you uh, during pregnancy this is why I included what I said first which is the the long strided lunges with the tucking the tailbone at the Connect. top and stabilizing like and that there was a lot of emphasis on every stride when she'd come up to a balance tuck the tailbone stabilize for a second then go into the next lunge and so we're working that deep full range of motion that she's probably finding a noob noob there but have control mm. and then stability in it and that that, that was something which now, she did all the now time. I want to add something else I know that you didn't ask about nutrition but I think this is important a couple foods you want to look at uh, egg yolks extremely um, beneficial typically for pregnant women high levels of choline the cholesterol in the egg yolks is phenomenal for brain uh, and neural development 
Um, uh, organ meats also look into organ meats. I know first trimester, everything's disgusting, so it might not be the best time to, to try, but if you can, organ meats very high in nutrients and pregnant women tend to lean towards things like anemia and the iron that you get from organ meats is very absorbable, far less likely to cause constipation, which also tends to be a problem with pregnant women. So rather than taking an iron pill that can cause constipation, which can cause other issues, eat something like chicken liver um, and then gauge that depending on what your blood tests uh, will say, which you'll probably get because you go to the doctor and they'll tell you iron is here and you know here's where your, 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 here's where your, your levels are. So maybe you can eat this much liver or that much liver. Those two nutritional uh, foods that I recommended I think are important for most pregnant women.